staff will be presenting a timeline um, for what we will be doing next. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we can interact um, at a later, at how we can, how, our job tonight, I wanna make sure that I'm clear on this, is to receive information from you, our general public. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your comments on this very important document that we have in front of us. And I'm looking forward to um, hearing from my uh, many constituents and others throughout the county on the importance of this. Um, I know that um, we're down one as far as not having air conditioning in the Monterey room, but we've also received a notice that PG&E may be doing rolling blackouts today and this evening. So my hope is that none of us are going to be challenged by either being bumped off either from the county side, the Monterey room over in Salinas or um, each of us at our own homes as we are on Zoom. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Eric, with a great deal of thanks to you specifically for really leading us through to get us to this point. Thank you all. And I'm looking forward to the uh, discussion this evening and hearing from uh, the people who care about this issue. Thank you. Great, thank you, Supervisor Adams and, and the public. And indeed, this critical that you all play a keen role in this public consultation session. The, the CEQA guidelines point out that early consultation with the public is critical in resolving any issues that sur surround the preparation of the draft environmental impact report. So your participation is critical uh, in this process. And you'll hear from my colleagues later tonight that th this isn't uh, a public hearing. Um, so there won't be a lot of back and forth dialogue. Um, in fact, there, there won't be any, um, but we are recording this session and we do continue to encourage written uh, public comments on the preparation of the environmental impact report. And this, this won't be the last opportunity. There will be several opportunities leading up to and at the public hearings um, where the impact report will be considered along with the draft ordinances. So continue to participate in, in these discussions as it'll make a more beneficial uh, project. So with that said, I'll turn the floor over to Melanie who will say a few words. Thank you. Great, thank you, Eric. Can you all hear me? Yes. Wonderful. So again, I'm Melanie Beretti with the County of Monterey. Um, and I wanted to just make an announcement. We have a new arrival here in the Monterey Room. So just for folks who are here in the Monterey Room, please know that the Monterey Room is equipped with um, microphones in the ceilings. So anywhere you are in the room while we are unmuted as a room can be heard. So we just ask that you be mindful, not side talk, um, so that that doesn't confuse the Zoom while we're here. Um, and we're thankful that you all have joined us. Uh, with that, just a couple of other um, points of clarification as we get going. Just reiterating again, we're here to listen to you today. We're going to provide staff and Ascent, our consultant team, we're going to provide a brief presentation to orient you all with the ordinances and the environmental uh, analysis process overview. And then we will open it for public input. Um, and we also encourage you and you have the opportunity to provide public input uh, via written comment as well. And we will be reiterating this throughout uh, our presentation. Next slide. So I want to please note for everyone that we are recording today's scoping meeting, uh, both on the Zoom and we also have a recorder here as well. The recording of the Zoom meeting will be posted on our website. Following today's meeting, we ask that you give us 48 hours. Uh, we hope to have it by the end of day tomorrow, but we ask you give us 48 hours and that can be shared. Uh, with others as well. Next slide. So for individuals who are joined by Zoom, we just want to let you know your audio and your video is automatically turned off for today's meeting. That helps us manage the meeting with a little more organization. Um, you control the layout on your slides, how you see your slides versus the panelists on the video. That is controlled on your screen. And so if anything is in the way, you have the ability to move it. Uh, that's not something that we're able to do for you. Next slide. So thank you all for joining us today. We did want to upfront acknowledge. So we, last Monday, August 29th, we released the notice of preparation of an environmental impact report, as well as draft initial study for the vacation rental of ordinances. We discovered a few errors that needed correction. And so we wanted to flag for everyone that we have, as of today, issued a revised notice of preparation, which I will refer to as NOP. 
and a revised initial study. Um, I'll cover a little bit of what that re revisions are. It is up and live on our website. So you can go find it on the vacation rental ordinance webpage on the county's page. Um, and we have also extended the review period through October 6th. So you'll have the full 30 days to review given these modifications or the uh, clarifications we needed to make. Next slide. So we did just wanna highlight, for those of you who may have looked at the original one, we did just wanna highlight some of the clarifications so that there's no confusion. So in the revised notice that was sent out and posted just today, we did clarify that the, to be clear, the 6% cap on vacation rental permits applies to commercial vacation rentals. So we added that clarification to the document. We've also added the clarification, so there's no confusion, that the draft ordinances, as they're written, prohibit commercial vacation rentals in Big Sur. They also prohibit them in the low-density residential zones of the Carmel area, land use plan area. There were also some minor typos, and none of these changes um, altered uh, the analysis in the initial study. They were just clarifications. We also did in the notice of preparation, add some additional clarification and instructions for submitting comments via email or facsimile. So those are the changes uh, that you will see and it's a very clear track changes version. So you can see exactly what the edits were that we made since we published it. Next slide. So briefly, um, we've actually already done introduced introductions. Eric introduced um, by name our team who's going to pre be presenting and with us today from the county as well as our ascent consultant team. Um, we're going to go over uh, the project overview, the environmental or CEQA process, as well as the scope of the environmental impact report. And then we're really going to look to you all for that public input. Next slide. And you can move to the next. Next slide. So by way of background, the county has been working actively to develop regulations related to vacation, also known as short-term rentals, um, on residential properties in the unincorporated parts of Monterey County since 2014. Um, we've done a significant amount of development through planning commission hearings, public outreach, um, and in November of 2020, staff brought forward draft ordinances to the Board of Supervisors to get their policy feedback and input. The Board considered those draft ordinances in November and then again in May of 2021 and provided direction to staff, which we then followed to refine those draft ordinances per their direction and proceed with environmental review. So that's where we are at today, is we're at the environmental review. So we've got our notice of preparation initial study that are available for public comment through October 6th, and we will not be responding directly to that comment we feed. Instead, we take all of that feedback that you get and we that we get through this 30-day public review period, and we incorporate that as a part of the development of our next step, which will be developing the draft environmental impact report or draft EIR. And I wanna really emphasize that there will be multiple steps in the process as we move forward for formal public comment in the process. Next slide. So we are talking today about ordinances establishing regulations for vacation rental uses in unincorporated Monterey County. These are countywide ordinances, again, in the unincorporated area, so these do not provide, these do not apply within city limits. Cities have their own separate regulations. Um, and just for a definition, I want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Vacation rentals are the use by any person of residential property for transient lodging where the term of occupancy, possession, or tenancy of that property by that person is um, for a period of 30 consecutive calendar days or fewer, counting portions of those calendar days. A vacation rental includes commercial vacation rentals and limited vacation rentals, which I will define in a minute. And just to be clear, vacation rentals do not include bed and breakfast facilities, hotels, motels, hostels, inns, 
uh, rooming house, boarding house, or rooming and boarding, which are all otherwise defined in Monterey County Code. Next slide, please. So we make the distinction between commercial vacation rentals and limited vacation rentals in that limited vacation rentals are residential property that is rented by an owner or operated for not more than three times per 12 month period and with each such rental not exceeding 14 consecutive calendar days. So again, by name and by definition, limited vacation rentals are very limited. Commercial vacation rentals are therefore essentially anything else that are rent vacation rentals that are rented more than three times per 12 month period. Um, or if they're rented for fewer than three times, it could be because they exceed that duration of 14 consecutive calendar days. So essentially anything that is rented more frequently or with a longer duration than what is allowed as a limited vacation rental is considered a commercial vacation rental for the, in the draft ordinances. Next slide. So the project description for CEQA, or our project, consists of three draft ordinances. So we are amending section 7.02.06 of the Monterey County Code related to business licensing for hotels and vacation rentals. We are adding chapter 7.110 relating to vacation rental activities. We are also amending title 20, the coastal zoning ordinance, and Title 21, the non-coastal or inland zoning ordinance related to vacation rentals. Next slide. So these draft ordinances put together establish, um, <clears throat> they establish permits, licenses, and registration requirements for operating vacation rentals in the County of Monterey. So those permits, there is in the inland or non-coastal zone, commercial vacation rentals are required to obtain a use permit. And in the coastal zone, those commercial vacation rentals are required to obtain a coastal development permit. All vacation rentals, limited and commercial, are required to obtain a vacation rental operation permit, a business license, as well as register to pay transient occupancy tax. And I do wanna note that Hotels are also required, hotels as defined, which are other traditional hospitality uh, rentals. They are also now required once these ordinances go into effect, uh, there will be a new business licensing requirement. So I just wanted to make sure that didn't get lost in the details. So I'm just gonna hit an overview of some of the key requirements in the regulations. This is not an exhaustive detail. We encourage you to look at the regulations themselves, the ordinances themselves for more detail. But as indicated before, there is, they establish a maximum of 6%, 6 of the residential dwelling units within any given planning area that could be allowed or permitted as commercial vacation rentals, with the exception in Big Sur, because commercial vacation rentals are not allowed in Big Sur. Um, there are um, commercial vacation rentals are also prohibited in Big Sur as well as in the low density residential zones of the Carmel area. The ordinances also have requirements and lay out a procedure for phasing out unpermitted operations. They also recognize um, an exemption for unique neighborhoods that were prior established and permitted with the intent of being managed vacation rentals or short-term uses. Uh, we know, for example, Monterey Dunes Colony, they have an existing use permit with that intended use in mind. So it only exempts those already prior permitted unique neighborhoods. Next slide. The regulations also increase the fines for code violations and they base those fines on advertised rental rates. So the more money you get for renting your house or room out as a vacation rental, you would have a higher, um, your uh, fines would be linked to, um, to those rental rates. It includes maximum limits on overnight as well as daytime occupancies. It requires a property manager who is available all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week while it is being rented, while the property is being rented as a vacation rental. Um, in agriculturally zoned properties um, that have an active ag operation, that property manager is required to reside on property while it's being rented as a vacation rental. 
and includes rules for all operations that they need to adhere to, um, including um, compliance with drinking water standards um, and ensuring that any on-site wastewater treatment systems are functioning properly. Next slide. I'm gonna hand it now over to my colleague, Kathy Washington, who is with Ascent Environmental, and she's gonna go through the CEQA process um, and the, and the um, environmental review process for you. Kathy? All right, um, thank you, Melanie. Next slide. So uh, CEQA, which is defined as a California Environmental Quality Act, um, um, the purpose of CEQA, um, so the lead agency for this project is um, Monterey County. So they are the CEQA lead agency. And as defined by CEQA guidelines section um, 15002, CEQA requires the evaluation of a project's effects on the, environmental, on the environment and identifies ways to avoid or reduce significant effects, so where feasible. Um, it also facilitates and supports public participation, for example, the stoping meeting and the stoping process for the NOP. It will, it informs decision makers and the public about potential and um, significant environmental effects of a proposed project. If there is a potential for a project to result in a significant impact, an environmental impact report is required to be prepared. A significant impact is defined as, as an impact that would result in a substantial and adverse change to the physical environment. Um, an initial study was prepared, that, which is currently um, available for review along with the notice of preparation. And based on that initial study um, that was prepared, it has been decided um, that an EIR is the appropriate CEQA document to be prepared for the, um, for the Vacation Rental Ordinance Project. Next slide. Okay, this is um, just a, an overview of the EIR process. Um, so the purpose of stoping is to gather public um, or gather public and agency input on the scope of the EIR. So we are currently at this phase of the process. After um, the we are the public review period um, for the notice of preparation is completed, and we have obtained all public comments. Um, the draft EIR will be prepared. And once the draft EIR is completed, it will go out for a public review period of 45 days. Um, a notice availability would be made available to the public um, to notify you when the draft EIR is available for review. And during that time, that is another opportunity you will have um, to review the EIR and provide comments and it will um, occur within a 45 day review period. There will be a public hearing um, for the draft EIR, so similar to the Stopi meeting, we will have another meeting to present the EIR to the public. Once the draft EIR period is completed, we will prepare the final EIR, and the final EIR includes responses to all comments um, that are received. Once the final EIR is completed, um, then the, the last step in the process is certification of the EIR and public consideration, which will be um, done at a future public hearing. So just some general, um, there's no, we don't have a schedule set, but our idea um, currently right now is that we anticipate um, a, the draft EIR sometime in mid um, 2023 and the final EIR um, possibly late 2023. So the stoping process, which is where we are um, right now, is really, uh, the purpose of it is to solicit input and comments on the scope of the EIR. Um, the issues should, um, the issues that we should be addressing in the EIR and any alternatives that we should consider. Um, as Melanie mentioned, the notice of preparation of, the, of an EIR and the initial study was um, issued on August 29th. Um, then the revised NOP and the revised initial study uh, was reissued today, September 6th. Um, the stoping period um, started August 29th, and it was just recently extended um, to make sure you all have the full 30 days. So the review period ends on October 6th. And um, today is our very first um, stoping meeting. So we have one today, and there is a second stoping meeting, which will occur on September 19th. Next slide. 
Next slide. As I mentioned, um, we did prepare an initial study and that is available for review. Um, and as um, based on the initial study, these are the environmental issues that we've identified that will be evaluated um, in the EIR. So agricultural resources, air quality, energy, greenhouse gas emissions, hydrology and water quality, specifically groundwater use, um, land use and planning, noise, population and housing, transportation, tribal cultural resources, um, and utilities, specifically water use. Next slide. Next slide. So the county is seeking your input. So this is an, op um, so we are currently in the 30 day public um, comment period for the notice of preparation. Um, and we are uh, soliciting comments on the scope of the EIR. So your comments should um, focus and identify any environmental issues or concerns that you feel should be addressed in the EIR. I know we, I just went through a list that we've identified, but we were really looking to the public to let us know if we missed any. So please um, focus your comments on any environmental issues or concerns that you have. Um, and then also, um, the EIR will be um, looking at a, a reasonable range of alternatives and will also include mitigation measures for any impacts that are identified. So we're looking to the public to provide input on alternatives or mitigation measures that should be considered. Next slide. Comments again are due October 6th. Um, and there are several ways that you can provide comments. You can provide verbal comments today. If you choose to provide an uh, oral comment today, we also um, highly recommend that you also provide written comments um, by the deadline, so October 6th. Um, you can email your comments to c4comments at co.monterey.ca.us or mail your comments to the Monterey County Housing and Community Development Department at the address listed here. And that address is also um, listed on the notice of preparation. Next slide. Um, it, for more information and to stay informed, um, please note that if you are already receiving notices from the county regarding the vacation rental ordinance development, you're already on the public distribution list and will continue to receive notices. If you are not on that list, um, uh, you can contact uh, uh, the email address on the screen, which is hcdcomments at co.monterey.ca.us, or you can contact Melanie at 831-755-5285. Um, and again, the notice of preparation and the initial study are available on the county's website. The website address is listed here um, and is also listed within the, the notice of preparation itself. Next slide. I'm gonna turn it back over to Melanie um, for meeting the logistics. Um, again, our, we're gonna, we will be opening it up for public comment. And again, the public comments uh, really is to focus on the um, scope of the EIR, any um, uh, alternatives or specific mitigation measures. Um, and we are available to, if there are comments, uh, sorry, questions, uh, clear, you know, minor clarifying questions that we can't answer, we'll do, we will answer. If you have questions regarding the SQL process, happy to answer those questions for you too. All right, Melanie? Thank you, Kathy. Thank yeah, you. thanks, Kathy. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so we are going to go through public comment. We'll do individuals who are here in person first. That way also, if they're overheating, you all are very welcome to stay or depart afterwards if it's too warm. Um, if you are on Zoom or if you are calling in, excuse me, if you're calling in, you can provide public comments by phone by pressing star, the star and nine to indicate that you would like to speak. That will essentially raise your hand for us. When it's your turn, um, we will call out the number of what the digits are ending in, and you will have the ability at that point to unmute your microphone. And to do so, you can press star six to unmute. And then once you're done 
you can press star six again to remove yourself. Next slide. So for those of you who are joining via Zoom and are on the web, today's webinar, so there is a very clear raise hand function. Um, and so just look for that button for the raise hand function. And then when it's your turn, so once we turn to Zoom, we will go through in order that folks appear. And when it is your turn, the host will, be give, will give you the opportunity to unmute yourself. And at that point in time, uh, you'll want to make the selection uh, to, yes, unmute yourself unless you um, have changed your mind. Next slide. So, um, and again, we will generally be taking, uh, we will generally be taking question and comments um, in order that they are received. For those of you who are in attendees in person, and if you haven't done so yet, we do have um, speaker request cards that you can fill out. Mm -hmm. And if you want to give that to us so we can call you up. Um, and again, if you're participant via Zoom or phone, you're welcome to raise your hand at this point in time. Please know to just sit tight until we get through the in-person comments. We will then uh, turn to our phone and Zoom uh, callers. Also, we have given one and a half minute time limit for comments today. Again, we want to hear from you, but we want to also let you know we really encourage you to submit written comments as a follow-up, even if you do present to us today, but we absolutely are listening today as well. Uh, please do know with the, with the verbal comments, um, just to be fair to all commenters so we can get through everybody, we will be cutting the time off at, we will be muting and cutting you off at one minute, 30 seconds. So we ask you to please be very mindful of the time. On that, I'll let you know. Um, next slide, please. So before we go into, we will pull up, we have a timer, it will show on the screen. So here in the room, you'll be able to see it on the main monitor and at home, you'll be able to see the timer um, on our Zoom webinar. It'll still show as a part of the screen. And what you'll notice, it's for a minute and 30 seconds. When you get to 60 seconds or one minute left, you will then, um, the timer will turn red. So it'll alert you, you have a minute left. And then when it gets to 30 seconds left, it'll turn a brighter red. So we don't want to run into cutting you off. I do not like doing that. So please just be mindful um, to time your, uh, time your comments. There is then a beep at the end, and then we'll go ahead and mute and move on to our next, uh, next uh, commenter. So with that, we just very much thank you for your interest, your participation. And we are going to go ahead into the Monterey room here. I'm going to try to get this portion. And for folks here in the room, we will be turning the video on um, here in the Monterey room. And we invite you to come up. I'll call your name in order. We invite you to come up. And so when you present, please stand at the table here because that way you get in the, in the view of the camera um, for our meeting invite. So with that, we'll start with, um, so Jeffrey Wood, you'll be up first. We will then have Rick Manning. And John Hines, please tell me I said your name right. There you go. So if you all can wait in the queue, if you're next up, that would be great. So you're standing right here in the group? Yep, you can stand right there and you can okay. just talk normal voice. The microphones will... You will can't see the there. time unless you look over your shoulder. I will turn oh. my... Oh, that one on. I will turn mine as well. Um, yeah. Well, so it's not on this screen. Right here. Yeah, apologies. Yeah. That flitted out for some reason. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, all right, with that, uh, okay. please. Mr. My major comments relate to the commercial vacation rentals. I am in favor of the limited rentals or home stays as we call them. And I, I, my problem is with the commercial rentals. Uh, and for, I live in Carmel Valley. So the current situation there is um, that most of the Carmel Valley neighborhoods are currently zoned for residential use. That means that no major business activity in the neighborhoods are except for a few neighbors who might be working from home. Um, the Carmel Valley Association has done a certain amount of research related to the Granicus vacation rental software. And we've determined that 85% of all vacation rentals in Carmel Valley currently are commercial or they're very, actually their whole house. Even if we gave uh, a certain amount of time to 
the um, people who have multiple houses on a property, it's still three out of every four are commercial. So if we had that many commercials in all of our neighborhoods, it's going to create a major, major problem. My, my feeling is that we should make sure that we have commercial uh, limit, much more limitation to commercial rentals. And uh, because the neighborhoods in Carmel Valley will be irreparably harmed over time. Thank you very much. And our next speaker, Rick Manning, if you can come up while we reset the timer. And then John, is it Hayes? Heil. Heil, thank you. Oh, I didn't think that makes sense. John Heil will be next if you can be ready in the queue. And after that, see us now. All right, thank you when you're ready. Thank you. Well, thanks to everyone who made this meeting possible. Uh, I'm a little suspicious that there could be more construction uh, involved with the ordinance as it stands. I know that people have renovated and improved and made adjustments to their property to accommodate the development of their vacation rental at this time, and I think it would only continue in the future. Uh, I do have a basic issue with the um, fact that the purpose of the ordinance to preserve and enhance the residential character and sense of security in stable neighborhoods of residential property is not being met by this uh, draft. I think our safety and security, peaceful enjoyment of residential areas uh, is in jeopardy. Uh, importantly, I think we need more analysis on the impact upon our parks, regional, state, county, because of the increased number of visitors to the area, which I think is unavoidable as we expand the privilege of having vacation rentals. And I know we all visit our parks, we love our parks, but I think the people who come down for vacation rentals are especially interested in going to the parks. So they'll be walking farther and maybe need more maintenance and maybe et cetera. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right, next up is John Heil, and then C.S. Noel will be in the queue. Thanks, Melody. When you're ready. Were you ready? Yeah. Okay, my name is John Heil, and I live near Carmel Valley Village. I serve as the Carmel Valley Association's uh, Vacation Rental Task Force Co-Chair. And yeah, we monitor them with our own host compliance system, too. And we field complaints from residents who are uh, seeing increased noise, lighting, traffic, parking, and other issues that contribute to the destabilizing of their neighborhoods due to these vacation rentals. This project fails to either preserve or enhance the residential character of our valley and negatively impacts residents' sense of security and safety, a prime purpose of the whole thing to start with. The affordable housing supply is definitely decreased. I draw your attention to the chart provided by HCD staff on pages 10 and 11. First, there's a conflation between vacation rentals and those not yet permitted in the wording. Second, our numbers show 163 currently advertised vacation rentals. There show 129. Who's right? The allowed rentals based on the 6% cap, um, would, would, uh, there, we only have 110 visitors serving units east of Majorca left and they're already used up with existing permits, permitted facilities, let alone the ones that are advertising and not been enforced yet. Um, CBA members will propose several alternatives for this project, both verbally and in writing. But the main thing is, should it come to a no project, we already have regulations and we just need to augment existing regulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next is CS Noel. And if anybody else here in the chambers would like to speak, you may stand, All right? Whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up, my name is CS Noel and I live in Carmel Valley near the village and wanted to bring up a couple of items that occur in the ordinance that are inconsistent with other guiding documents. And um, the first relates to the Carmel Valley Master Plan. The um, NOP says that the process for commercial vacation rentals located in areas subject to visitor serving unit caps are very important because um, a permit 
application is going to be subject to first come first serve basis. And uh, Carmel Valley Master Plan in CV1.15 already has set up uh, visitor serving unit caps that are still in force, but um, the proposed organ ordinance doesn't seem to reflect any of those. So there seems to be, from an EIR perspective, an inconsistency between the Carmel Valley Master Plan and the draft ordinance. Um, another area I wanted to identify is that um, the ordinance does not appear to meet the restrictions as stated in Monterey County's existing zoning ordinance, Title 2.64.28, regarding limited and commercial vacation resent, uh, rentals that results in um, an injurious condition to the preservation of the character and environment of the various zoning districts stated in Title 21. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I believe that is our, all of our in-person speakers here today. Melanie, so I can't that, help. I'm, sorry to interrupt you. I can't help but to notice a lot of the speakers have prepared statements. It might be beneficial if they're comfortable handing those in. Um, that would be great to have in the record. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, as a reminder, you're welcome. We did receive one already. If you'd like to hand in, we're just bring it up front to us if you'd like to hand your prepared statements in. Thank you for that. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Tracy, who is going to help with um, our online participants. So again, if you're online, you can do the raise hand button. If you're on the phone, do star nine to raise your hand. And then Tracy will help facilitate us through the, um, the online Zoom comments. Melanie, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is there any way we can see the other people presenting that are online in the room? The question was raised whether or not you can see those online. I don't believe so. Um, I okay. believe it'll just be the name and then you'll hear their voice. Is that what you're seeing too? I, I am able to see all of the attendees list, yeah. um, but I don't think we can pull that Okay, up here. thank you. Great. Um, so the first uh, raise hand in Zoom is Bruce Merchant. Um, Bruce, you should have the ability to unmute yourself. Yes, I have. Great. Whenever you're ready, I'll start the timer. All right. Thank you very much. I want to, I'm, my name is Bruce Merchant. I live in North Big Sur uh, above Palo, Colorado. I'm generally pleased with what I see in these, uh, pr proposed ordinance. Um, I wanted to make a point, which I think is already recognized, but I want to emphasize it, that from a governance standpoint, short-term rentals that do not have full-time residents are not residential properties. They are instead commercial properties, just like hotels. The same is true of other rental properties and venues in residential areas, such as event spaces, wedding venues, and such. These commercial spaces, if unrestricted, will lead to the overall commercialization of our formerly residential neighborhoods and overwhelm our space and our services with excessive traffic, pollution, noise, and light pollution. In addition, the county loses the tax revenue that should be generated by commercial enterprises. All short-term short -term rentals that are not permanent residences but simply substitutes for hotels should be taxed and regulated as commercial enterprises, including property taxes, and should be restricted from operating in areas that are not zoned for commercial property. That's my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bruce. Let me just get the timer reset. All right. The next person with their hand raised is Dick Stott. Dick, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, the notice of preparation reads as follows. This process is especially important for commercial vacation rental operations located in areas that are subject to visitor serving uh, unit caps because approval of a permit application will be subject uh, to first come first term basis. However, the Carmel Valley Master Plan creates two areas limiting uh, visitor serving units, west of Via Mallorca, 175, east of Via Mallorca, 110, for a total of 285. The initial study states that under their proposal, 
proposed six uh, percent cap, three hundred and two units would be available. Makes no distinction between the areas east and west of Via Mallorca. It also states that there are currently one hundred and twenty nine advertised vacation rentals in master plan, and I believe it's already been pointed out that this is in conflict with data provided by Granicus and the tax collector's office. All right, thank you so much. Let me just reset the timer. Tracy, we might want to check with Dick to make sure he didn't mute himself inadvertently. Oh. It sounded like he was still speaking. Gotcha. Uh, no, I, I muted myself after I mentioned tax collector's office. So that was the end of my, my comment. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the next uh, person is Bill Monning. Sorry, let me reset the timer. Bill, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Yes, thank you. Um, this is Bill Monning and my wife, Dana Kent. We live in unincorporated Carmel in the coastal zone. Uh, a couple of questions just as things move forward. It'd be helped to have a better definition of areas considered low density, um, as well as the 6%. What's the denominator? Is it 6% in a zone? Is it 6% in our neighborhood? Our neighborhood has multiple commercial vacation rentals, uh, one that's divided a two-story prior residential home into two commercial rental units. We've had 10 to 15 vehicles parked at a time. Our questions on the scoping go to whether it will look at impact on infrastructure, road, water use, and access for emergency vehicles, as well as access for waste um, collection trucks that can no longer navigate when there's so many cars parked in this area. So concerned about public safety, water use, and really, the conversion of what had been a residential neighborhood to now a commercial zone that is going full-blown commercial. Uh, we appreciate the work you're doing and we will submit uh, comments in writing that raise these concerns. The questions, hopefully you can direct us at some point to answers for those. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have submitted a comment um, via Zoom, if you, it would be a great help if you would lower your hand after you've had a chance to speak. Uh, reminder for those who are on the phone that if you wanted to indicate that you're raising your hand and you just you only called in, please press star nine to raise your hand if you called in. Um, all right, the net. Let me reset the timer. Whoop. Thank you. All right, the next person is Cynthia Hurley, Hurtlian. Cynthia, you, sh you should be able to unmute yourself now. Cynthia, um, you should be able to unmute yourself. You do have to, there's a little pop-up that shows up that you do have to hit to accept that you're going to unmute yourself now. Okay, thank you. I, my button wasn't working. Sure. Okay, I, I live in Carmel Valley and I'm opposed to adding any more um, VRBOs other than on owner-occupied property. We've already seen our neighborhood lose regular families, people who live here who become part of the community, both to VRBO use and to people who have coming down from the Bay Area and buying property that they're just here occasionally. And there's a housing shortage. We need to take care of the people who live here, work here, and are part of the community and actively volunteering and adding to the community and not take away from that. And that's all I need to say. Thank you.
pardon me, my phone went off with the emergency alert. Um, everybody's got a safe energy right now. The next person will be David Picas. David, you should be able to unmute yourself and I am resetting the timer. Okay, right, unmuted. Um, thank you very much, it's uh, Picus. Um, I operate a very small studio in our house. And when we bought our house, it was the only way we could afford the mortgage and our whole planning. And we renovated our whole house, but uh, it was in mind to having a small vacation rental unit in the back. Um, but this is all supposed to be not about the pros and cons, but really sticking to environmental issues and uh, speaking of alternatives. And it strikes me that one of the main things you could talk about, hey, if I had more kids and they were living in that back bedroom, would we have more or less laundry? And if we were doing full-time uh, rental, would we have more or less traffic? A lot of those are kind of the wash, but I think the big key issue is this. There are a whole lot of vacation rentals in the unit, uh, uh, vacation rentals in the area, maybe around a thousand or like seven, eight hundred. I don't have those numbers. And a lot of them are like two bedrooms. So maybe we're talking about housing 1,400 tourists. Monterey County is dedicated, I think it's very important, this whole tourism industry. And if a lot of us all get discouraged and the regulations are too hard and we shut down, the alternative is hotels. 200 plus room hotels, giant hotels. What's the environmental impact on putting up another embassy suites or this place in Marina or on Cannery Row? The alternative environmentally is major, major construction. Tracy, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, next should be Linda Marin. You should be able to. I I think I'm unmuted. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm wanting to just question the timing of this um, CEQA review because it seems as though it's going to come up against um, the the Coastal Commission um, as as you know, has been mentioned in many other conversations um, in the past, uh, the Coastal Draft Ordinance will almost certainly be rejected by the Coastal Commission because the commercial vacation rentals, which are the, you know, vast majority of current vacation rentals, would be banned in Big Sur and the zoning districts is in Carmel Area Land Use Plan, including Carmel Highlands, and possibly in Del Monte Forest. So this complete ban, um, will change the numbers that the CEQA would be dealing with. And it will not be a, a true read of what will actually happen when the Coastal Commission weighs in as it has before and said, it's not interested in, in doing coastal development permits and um, it's not intensification of use as far as they're concerned. And um, it's a non-starter to have all of those restrictions there in the coastal zone. So I'm thinking it should, this this should happen later. The sequel should happen later after those issues are resolved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Peter Hiller. Peter, you should be able to unmute, your, unmute yourself now. Uh, thank you. Um, I appreciate having an opportunity to speak. Earlier today, I sent a rather what I would consider emotional letter to all of the Board of Supervisors, uh, including Melanie, and to the comments website. Um, what I just want to go on record now is saying that I've been listening and following along with this conversation. I understand that there's going to be another meeting in a couple of weeks, um, also in a Zoom type format, at which time I will try to craft some thoughts that are more specifically to the comments you've asked for having to do with environmental um, concerns, alternatives, um, and also mitigation. So I will try to be a little less emotional in that case, um, but still address the issues, which um, I feel like at 
best case scenario, we have owner occupied situations and anything less than that, I think has a really detrimental impact on neighborhoods. I live in the Mission Fields neighborhood of unincorporated Carmel. It is a traditional leave it to beaver neighborhood, one of the few on the peninsula. And, you know, anything less than, you know, pretty conscientious um, concern um, really is detrimental to the neighborhood. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, a reminder to folks, if you have our uh, if your hand is raised and you've already submitted your comment, it's helpful if you would lower your hand. Um, and then if you are on the phone and you wanted to raise your hand, you do need to press star nine to indicate that you would like to speak. Um, if you're on Zoom and you still wanted to submit a, a comment and you have not yet, please do use that raise hand feature that helps me know that uh, I am to call on you. All right, um, so just the last, last, we don't currently have any hands raised. Um, so just a reminder, if you're on Zoom, you wanted to speak and you have not yet, please do raise your hand. Okay, Richard Rosenthal, let me just reset the timer real quick. Richard, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a list of questions. I don't want answers to them because in the minute, whatever it is, it's not enough time. So the questions are, how did you come up with 6%? One. Two, how do you square reducing the number of residential dwellings available to purchase or rent and adding to visitor accommodation units? Three. How will a county meet its fair share of housing after reducing the number of residential housing in residential zones by 6%? How many units uh, are there in Carmel Valley operating as vacation rentals? Um, on 11-30-21 staff report to the Board of Supervisors, that report indicates e illegal units over 502 residential units per staff report. Um, has this uh, zoning ordinance been um, reviewed or adopted by any county commission or agency? And lastly, uh, what environmental impacts uh, do you anticipate uh, from implementing the ordinances? Thank you. Thank you. Um, reminder, if you've joined us via Zoom and you wanted to submit a verbal comment and you have not done so yet, we do need you to use that raise hand feature so I know to call on you. And if you have called in via the phone only and you want to leave a verbal comment, you do need to press star nine to raise your hand. Sorry, Molly. Oh, sorry. I did just want to remind anyone here in room if in person, if you'd like to make a comment, put your hand up and we can get you on the queue too. If not, we, no, no obligation. All right, we will be and having a second, second meeting on September 19th. The link is provided in the notice of preparation. And so if you didn't speak today, but um, consider speaking at the next meeting, you're welcome to do that. We do hope to have some agencies participating in that meeting on the 19th. Also, um, written comments to the email as indicated in the presentation and as shown in the notice of preparation. If you do have specific comments that we weren't able to answer tonight, I was dying to, to answer them because I know the answers to them. I'd love to have you reach out to me or reach out to Melanie and we can get those addressed for you so there's no um, uncertainty in the county's position. So don't, don't hesitate to do that. We're there um, to answer those questions, but uh, tonight wasn't that forum. But we do thank you all for um, sharing your comments tonight and we will be considering them as we 
I'm charged forward. As Supervisor Adams indicated, this is a high priority for our department, and we are hoping um, to proceed relatively quickly, but wanting to do a careful analysis as we, we move it forward. So um, please stay engaged. And I am not seeing anybody else. And I heard from Melanie that there's nobody else in the room. Um, so I think we'll we'll go ahead and wrap up for tonight. And thank you all for participating. Um, as we once said, go go take take a nap and conserve some energy. And we'll catch you on the next scoping meeting. Thank you so much. <laughs>